Hey guys! Today's video is going to be another seasonal things to do in Japan video, and since I've already done summer and autumn, today's is going to be, you guessed it, winter. As usual, I'm going to format this video with five of my favorite things to do in Japan in winter. I'm going to be talking about why I like them, and some recommendations for you like travel tips and what I recommend doing, and just anything that I think it might be handy to know before doing these things. I'm also going to be inserting pictures so that you can see what you might expect from going to these places throughout the video, and I will also be linking to my videos of going to these places throughout the video somewhere like up here. I don't know which side it is. <laughs> anyway, you'll have like a lot of opportunities to see what the places look like throughout the video is what I'm trying to say. Also, if you want to see more photos, I will be linking to my albums of each place or each thing <laughs> in the description below. So check that out if you want more information. All right, let's get into it. My first recommendation is the Yuki Matsuri or Snow Festival in Hokkaido. This is a festival that happens every year, although the dates do change. It's usually in early February and it's always set up so that there are two weekends for the festival. So it will always start on a Thursday and end on a Monday. So just make sure you check the dates before going. So why I loved it, I mean, <laughs> it's just magical. As someone who comes from New Zealand, we get maybe like one or two snows. Not, not even that. We get like one snow every couple of years. <laughs> so snow is something that is pretty like kind of a novelty to me and so seeing all of this snow in one place and all the ice and the sculptures that people make and just this whole like winter wonderland feel that they kind of make during the Yukimatsuri was really amazing. I think it's something that if you're able to do in Japan in winter it's definitely worth it because it's such a experience. It's like a like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Um, so yeah I, I really loved it. I think it was just so uh, special. I think it's something that I'll definitely never forget, um, and as you can see from the photos that I'm hopefully <laughs> I hopefully remembered to put in down here somewhere, uh, it was pretty magical. There's some pretty amazing things to see. Okay, so some tips that you might like to know before going to Yuki Matsuri. As I mentioned before, the dates do change, so make sure that you are arriving on the right dates. And also, as I mentioned before, it does span two weekends, and because the sculptures are made of ice and snow, they will start to get a bit raggedy after the first like couple of days, so I highly recommend going within the first week if you can. Unfortunately, I had to go in the second weekend, and while it was still absolutely incredible, I do wish that I could have gone in the first week, just because you could tell that the sculptures had been out for a while. Um, so yeah, go as early as you can in the festival season. Um, the other thing is that um, the Yukimatsuri, while it is kind of billed as this Sapporo only kind of thing, um, a lot of places in Hokkaido do things for the Yukimatsuri. So look up other places that you might like to go. The Sapporo one takes place down one main street of Sapporo. So you can either walk or there's um, like shuttles, buses that will take you between all the different places because it's so popular. Um, so what I would recommend is booking a hotel that is on or very close to that main street <laughs> in Sapporo. Um, and then you can go from there to each place in Sapporo. And if you want to, you can also go to places like Otaru, or um, the, the ice caves that I went to, here's a picture of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's tons of things to do. Make sure that if you have the time, you don't just spend it in Sapporo, because like everywhere is doing this amazing winter wonderland kind of stuff. So yeah, first recommendation is Yukimatsuri. My second recommendation is onsen, especially outdoor onsen. Onsen are amazing all year round, of course, but in my personal opinion, they are super magical in winter. Something about the super cold air and then the really warm water and the run <laughs> when you like run out in your little towel and drop it and like jump into the warm water is just incredible. Like there's something really fantastic about that feeling of like bathing in nature in like freezing cold weather. I don't know what it is, but if you've done it, I think you'll you'll get what I mean. So yeah, onsen, especially outdoor onsen in winter, are fantastic. Now, some things that you might want to know about onsen before going. I'm sure there are a billion videos like this and a billion like articles that you can look at because onsen are a pretty big part of Japanese culture. But just some little things that I think are really important. Um, number one, in case you didn't know, Japanese people will always be naked in onsen. It's just 
how it is so expect that they will be split into um like different genders so it'll be male and female um unless it's a private onsen in which case you can go with whoever you want but public onsen will be male and female and you'll go in and like be naked with a whole lot of other people so <laughs> that's fun uh something else to bear in mind is tattoos a lot of places in japan now especially the more touristy places are very much accepting of tattoos and onsen but bear in mind that some places still aren't so it's worth checking ahead or just like being prepared to get turned away if you have very visible tattoos. I have a few tattoos but they're pretty hard to see and I never really had an issue with that. Yeah, definitely try to go to an onsen in winter in Japan if you get the chance. My third recommendation will come as a surprise to no one who's followed my channel for a little while. That is the Kobe Luminarie. The Luminarie are done every single year in Kobe. It's like just a festival of lights and it is amazing. I loved it so much that I went every single year that I lived in Japan, so that tells you how incredible it is. Every year they hand paint all of the lights into different colours, so there'll be a different colour scheme every year, and it's just like this tunnel of lights that leads up to a cathedral, a temple of lights I guess I would call it. It's spectacular, it's amazing, definitely go. It happens in December every year, um, but as, as with the Yukimatsuri the dates do change so just make sure that you check that out before you go. Um, wear warm clothing, wear comfortable walking shoes because you will want to walk around like quite a bit <laughs> throughout the Illuminatier. Um, I also recommend after doing Kobe Illuminatier eat dinner in Kobe. It's amazing. Like Kobe beef everyone knows but the food in Kobe in general is mm, spectacular. Uh, also Kobe Chinatown is super close to the Luminarie so if you want to go and do that definitely do. As usual my fourth recommendation will be a food recommendation and this time it's not going to be a specific food but kind of a genre of food and that is themed cafes. Once again this will come as a surprise to no one who knows me even in the slightest. I love themed cafes. I feel like they're the kind of thing that you either really love them or you just don't care at all and I really love them. I love the novelty, I love the lengths that people will go to to put cute little characters in food. I love it all. <laughs> so if you're like me, winter is the perfect time to go and cozy up in a cute little cafe and enjoy some amazingly novelty food. So some things that you might like to know or might need to know before going to theme cafes. Theme cafes in, in Japan, I'm not sure about other places, but in Japan they're very limited time and they change often. So don't assume that just because you've seen someone going to a certain cafe like last year that that will still be there. Chances are it won't be. However, there are a couple of places like you can just google what is open like in the month and the year that you're going to Japan and you should be able to find a couple of places. Uh, there are also a few places that um, switch between themes. So there's one in Osaka that like just switches its theme every couple of months. There's a whole lot of places like that. But yeah, just like Google and make sure that you check the dates. <laughs> uh, the other thing I would say is try not to get too attached to any particular menu item that you might see online because a lot of the time they are like limited edition and they're sold out or whatever. So just go in with an open mind as to what you're going to get from the menu. But yeah, enjoy theme cafes in winter. There's no better time to enjoy an amazing, adorable cartoon character coffee. <laughs> My fifth and final recommendation is a New Year's shrine visit. I think especially if you're someone who's living in Japan longer term, visiting a shrine on New Year's is something you should absolutely try to do once. I really love it because it's a specific Japanese cultural experience that you can't necessarily get elsewhere and I think that's really amazing. And um, also you can get omikuji, which is like your fortune or your luck for the new year. Um, I got omikuji once in my first year in Japan and it was the worst luck possible so I just never did it again just in case. But if you want to try your hand at omikuji and see what your new year might look like, definitely do it. I think it's a really interesting thing to do at New Year's. Um, some things to be aware of. Number one, of course, this is actually a religious site that you're going to. There will be people who are praying, who are paying respect to their ancestors, who are worshipping. Like, bear that in mind and please, please, please be quiet and respectful. Of course, you already know this, but just in case, I feel like I have to say it just in case. Um, and on that note, uh, most Japanese people do go to shrines on New Year's, usually their ancestral shrine. Um, so be aware that there will be a lot of people. <laughs> I went to Meiji Jingu uh, for New Year's once in Tokyo and it was just so crowded. <laughs> so definitely be prepared for that and like just be aware that like it'll take you a long time to get through that shrine. <laughs> so yeah, fifth and final recommendation, New Year's shrine visit. 
Okay, so that wraps up my top five favorite things to do in Japan in winter. I really hope that if you are visiting Japan in winter that this has been helpful to you, or if you're living there over winter that this has provided some kind of insight on what you might like to do. Um, please let me know in the comments below if there's things that I missed or that you really like doing because I know that my experience is super limited um, and I'm sure other people would like to hear from you as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Peace!